Hello and welcome back. I hope you've all been doing well. I've just finished reading a book by Michio Kaku. Um, this is the second book by Kaku that I've read. The first one was called The Physics of the Future. I read that a few years ago and really enjoyed it. Um, I liked Michio Kaku's style of writing. I liked his presenting style. And I'd seen him on a few videos on YouTube doing, doing lectures and stuff. And so I then came across this book, which is called The Future of Humanity. This one was published in 2018, so it's only about two or three years old. And it, was, it, it didn't even take me that long to read. It's, it's quite a big book. It's like three or four hundred pages. And I was very surprised how, at how easy it is to read. It covers a, a wide, wide range of topics. Far too many to mention, really. If I was gonna give a full review of this book and cover everything that it covers, I'd have to do like an hour long video or something. But um, I'll give you a quick list of the stuff that it covers here. In this book, um, this book covers the history of rockets, the space race between America and Russia back in the 60s, it covers living on the moon and possibly having sp uh, stations on the moon to, to mine for things. It covers mining asteroids, which is going to be a huge thing in the future, by the way. It covers colonizing Mars and terraforming Mars. Terraforming means turning a kind of inhospitable planet into a hospitable planet if that's the right word. That's terraforming. We might terraform Mars in the near future. It covers self-replicating robots, cryonics, which is freezing human beings after they die. It covers immortality, alien life, and multiple universes. So th this book covers it all. If you're into futurology, if you're into what's, what might possibly happen in the future, this is definitely the book for you. As I say, I can't cover all of these topics in a, in a short video, but what I have done is I've gathered all of my favorite things in the book, my favorite insights. I've put them all into a little list here, and I'm gonna go through each one and cover it in a little bit more detail. Okay, so right at the top, early on in the book, he's talking about how we might start living on the moon or perhaps we might have stations on the moon where scientists and engineers mine for, for minerals and stuff. And he actually mentions that um, if somebody gets ill, if somebody needs an operation on the moon, they might actually be able to have that operation on the moon and a robot will do the surgery, but the robot will be remote controlled by a surgeon on Earth. So that there, there will literally be a surgeon on Earth holding a, holding a handset, pressing buttons, and up on the moon, a robot surgeon will perform the surgery on the astronaut. That is incredible. And it might happen. It, it's a realistic um, prediction. So that's number one on the list. Number two, another interesting point that I read in the book is um, in the future, it's quite fairly common knowledge that we might need generation ships to take us to other star systems. The Earth, might, the Earth is going to fall into decay and pollution, so we might need to build a big generation ship to take us to another star system on a big long journey that might take 10,000 years or more. But Kaku says it, it might happen in a different way. We might do that journey step by step using comets as stepping stones. Now, if, if you look back into the history of Earth, ancient humans traveled from one continent to another, but usually they didn't do it in one journey on a big, on a one long journey by boat. Instead, they went from one island and then they settled there for a while. And then from that island, they jumped to another island. He says it might happen that way instead. But instead of using islands, we might, we'll, we'll use comets or maybe asteroids. We'll travel to a comet, set up a station there, 
and then we'll move on from that comment. Um, Hello. Yeah. Okay. Looks like I'm getting moved on, so. I just got moved on by security there, as you saw, so <laughs> I'll finish the video here instead. Uh, so yeah, we, we'll use comets as stepping stones to get to planets. Uh, another interesting thing, there's an oddball planet out there. Uh, I should explain what an oddball planet is. We have exoplanets. Exoplanets are planets that orbit different stars to the sun. We have rogue planets in space. Rogue planets don't orbit any star. And we also have oddball planets which, as the name suggests, are very odd, and they're unlike any other planet. There's an oddball planet called 55 Sancri E, which could be made of diamonds. Yes, you heard that correctly. There might be a planet in space that is made of diamonds. I must say that we don't know for sure, though. Um, astronomers speculate about this because they know that the planet's hot at a certain temperature, and so they speculate that this temperature might produce diamonds. They don't know for sure, but it's certainly a fascinating uh, idea, isn't it? A planet made of diamonds. So that made, makes my little list. Another one, uh, going back to the subject of generation ships, a huge ship full of a, uh, a crew of astronauts flying to a distant star. And, and the, the important thing is, most people would not see the end result of the journey. Most people would be born and they would die on the ship without having reached the destination. It'd be a generation ship for thousands of years. However, one way around that problem would be to, instead of having a live crew on the ship, we might send frozen embryos on the ship or frozen DNA even. There would be frozen embryos on the ship in storage in a big freezer and on that ship there would be trained robots and when the gener when it wouldn't be a generation ship it would be something else when the ship reached the distant planet the robots would then work their magic on the frozen embryos they would defrost them maybe inject them with nanotechnology and bring them to life and raise them as as robot mothers maybe it would be around it would be a solution to the to the problem of having people dying on the ship without seeing the end destination it's fascinating stuff and it's a real possibility um, but it gets better brace yourself for this it, this is probably the highlight of the book for me what I'm about to say kind of makes the book it, it is mind-blowing stuff and remember, that Michio Kaku is not a conspiracy theorist. He's not crazy. He's like a serious physicist, a respected physicist. He says, on the subjects of immortality, he says, in the distant future, we might be able to have digital immortality. And we might be able to upload our consciousness onto a laser beam, fire the laser beam, into space towards a distant planet and then our consciousness will be downloaded into a computer and then an artificial body will walk around that planet and we will be able to experience and explore that planet in the robot body but it will feel like the real thing it will be exactly the same we'll be able to explore the universe via laser beam and our consciousness will travel on the laser beam. You might think that's crazy. I do. But I've got a weird feeling it might actually happen. We're hundreds of years away from that, but it's, it's, it's a serious prediction. Um, on the subject of immortality, and another quick thing I want to mention in this book that, that kind of uh, caught my attention. Michio Kaku once walked around the streets of New York, I think, somewhere in America, and he asked random people on the street whether they would drink um, a kind of magic potion that would make give them immortality. 
most people on the street surprisingly said no they wouldn't they would they wouldn't they wouldn't have immortality if they could have it because they, they said things like dying is a natural part of life and you know you, we should accept death when it comes and all this but then he he went to an old people's home he went to a care home and he spoke to a group of like 80 year olds and 90 year olds who were suffering from the ailments of old age and dementia and when he asked these old age pensioners the same question every single one of them said yes immediately I would I would drink the potion <laughs> just a little thought provoker there when you're young and healthy you might you might think oh yeah death's okay it's part of life but when you actually experience old age and you're almost there your opinions change dramatically all right so they, they were the highlights of the book for me but there, there's so much more in there it's it's a very rich book rich in details and uh, the, the, the amazing thing about this book is that it's so easy to read it covers topics like you know like space and astronomy but it's written for the layman and I actually read it pretty quickly and it, you can kind of, I wouldn't say you can skim through it but it's, it's an easy read it's very accessible and it's very reader friendly and I think Michio Kaku is an excellent um, an excellent lecturer actually I've seen some videos on YouTube he's a good speaker he explains things very clearly and uh, he has a knack of putting forward these topics these complex topics in a very easy way and this book is a fine example of that however I must say there is a there is a middle section in this book that gets a little bit technical he, he starts talking about rocket science <laughs> and he, he gets into the, the, the deep science of rocket engineering and that does get a bit technical and hard going and also there's a section at the end that gets very challenging as well when he talks about string theory and quantum theory so there are two sections in the book that you might struggle with but on the whole it, it's a very easy book and it's a delight to read so I highly recommend this one if you're into astronomy if you're into space if you're into the future and stuff I definitely recommend this okay so there you go the future of humanity gets a thumbs up from me go out and buy it um, thank you very much for watching my next video by the way will be another list of short stories worth reading I'm currently working on another one of those uh, in the meantime head over to my site jamesflynn.org become a member there's loads of goodies on there uh, become a patreon if you wish the, the link is in the about section here on YouTube become a patron check out my site and try to have a great day on this weird peculiar marvelous rock we call earth goodbye